Hello and welcome to another Blender tutorial brought to you by the Louis Art. My name is Emmanuel Okafo and today I will be going through the fundamentals of animating inside Blender. So in this tutorial I'll be, I'll be trying to cover every single phase of animation which uh, you might try to go into now, right now or in the future. So let's start up. So um, before I continue, I know most beginners are not aware of this but for your keyboard to work perfectly we can go to the edit preference okay and we want to go to input so make sure this is being checked so that you can be able to use some of the keyboard shortcut effectively so once you have that then you're all set so this is a blank scene so of course we need a timeline and we need an object for the animation so let's add a simple we add a simple UV sphere and then we can just place it on top of the grid okay and we can smooth this object if we go to the object panel here and shade smooth okay and we can probably give it a nice color either by adding material or just changing this display the viewport shade into object and we can add visibility then object okay so it looks pretty uh, so now what we want to do is bring out our timeline because we want to look at animation so we'll first look at animating basic objects then we move into actually animating advanced characters so to bring up your panel you want to go to this uh, corner and you can notice the mouse cursor switches to a plus or a cross icon then you can just drag out that okay and now for the editor type we want to select our timeline okay so now we have everything basically set so let's look look at some of the interface for the timeline and know what it does so um, first of all let's look at basic this single dot here means auto keyframe and that basically means once this is checked on I can move this and automatically Blender is going to add a keyframe for the object okay so you should be aware of that and this we just these are just playbacks so you can hit play you can pause it you can play backwards and yeah okay and this is just the movement of the timeline cursor so you can control it with this and this indicate the start frame and the end frame okay okay so that's just basic so let's go back let's go to the playback so what we're just going to worry about is this no sync um, basically when animating you want to set it to everything this is going to make it play your animation in real time so but if you're trying to simulate like clothes if you want to simulate rigid body and you want to have a um, real-time playback you need to set it to no sync so but when you're dealing with real animation like character animation object animation you want to set it to AV sync so we're going to leave it as that and for the key um, by default um, it's like this you don't have any key in here so what this basically means is um, just an automatic preset for blender to use um, for example if I want to insert keyframe the shortcut is to hit I so that's insert keyframe um, but and as you see as I hit I I have this drop down so I have location rotation so you can ins um, insert the keyframe you want to use so so I need to turn this off so it's going to insert the location and rotation okay but if you don't want to keep selecting this always then you can set it up here that it always insert keyframe for the location rotation and scale okay and yeah these are just some advanced stuff that you don't really need to worry about now and with that let's create our first object our first animation so we got um, let's just make this a one second animation it may look small but it's um, what we need um, so we just want to do a basic 
ball bouncing so we want the ball to um, fall down and go up okay <coughs> excuse me so let's hit key um, inside keyframe by hitting i so as you as you know, know it's going to do that automatically because we have set an act active key um key in set okay so once you do that um, we can inside keyframe okay and we want to go to the last keyframe and hit inside keyframe and then we want to go to frame 12 and inside keyframe so if I play back this animation we get this okay um, so let's talk a bit about the timeline so right now you see um, the timeline and I have 0 to 24 so that is one second and I know it's one second because of this the frame rate so if you set it to um, frame rate 24 frames per second that means every 24 frames you have one second if you set it to 30 frames per second that means every 30 frames you have one second so you should get that in mind so that you can be able to time your animation appropriately okay so for this animation I want it to be 24 frames per second so I'm gonna set it to that okay so that's basically everything you know about the timeline so to get good animation I then I have to introduce you guys to other editors so those editors you need to be in mind uh, is basically um, the dope sheet so this is um, basically identif uh, identical to the time um, timeline um, that you saw previously but this has more features for example um, from this top sheet you can select the action editor here you can actually name the animation so for this we can just call this ball bounce okay so that's one function of that and you can actually delete this and create multiple animations and with this save um, with this health icon here you can save the animation so these are all advanced stuff and I don't want to confuse you with that so this is the dope, um, dope sheet um, it's pr pretty um, it basically is identical to the timeline and not in advanced there but when you want to um, really play with your animation and get good results that's when you go into um, sorry about that you want to go bring up the graph editor okay so we're gonna switch it here editor type we want to switch it to the graph editor okay so we have it looking like this so if you've never used the graph editor it might look intimidating but it's basically it's quite straightforward if you understand how it works so this graph basically um, indicates the is a visual is a visual representation of the movement of the 3d object so um, for example if you look at this blue line okay um, you can see blender has the it has appropriate blue uh, fuck. it has an appropriate blue line um, blue curve here so if we move this we know we are moving it in the z axis okay and this the green one is our, our y axis sorry this is our x axis so if we move this up sorry I am think I'm playing with a scale so let's make sure we have the correct one selected so this is our x axis and if I move this you can see we're moving this in the x axis and moving this in the x axis axis okay so um, what I want us to worry about for now is our current animation so our current animation is just moving in the Z axis okay so if I play this animation um, it's not really behaving like a bounce ball so we could go uh, into the timeline and add a bunch of keyframes but that is not really an efficient way to work with animation um, the efficient way to work with animation is actually playing with the graph editor so I'm going to be showing you an example of that so when it comes to the graph editor there are three main interpolation type um, which are the which are the if I'm to bring it up here in this menu so if I go to ch channel and okay so you can see we have um, three main interpolation we have constant tabulation we have linear and we have um, I think this is the wrong one um, 
okay so interpolation mode this is where you want to be so you can actually get this by hitting t this is a shortcut okay so if you if i bring this up you see we have three main interpolation we have the constant as i've said earlier we have linear and bezier so let's quickly see what they do if i hit t and select constant okay so you can see the visual display of the motion and we have this very step animation okay and then if i hit t again and select linear we have this very um robotic not um very like static motion okay and then we have the base here so this, this gives us a more fluid looking animation okay so um right now let's say let's fix this bouncing so right now as you can see in the curve the landing is too smooth okay so we want it to be a bit snapped here we don't want it to just quickly um go up because this is smooth um this i don't know how to explain it directly but because this is a bezier curve and it's curved so we are getting this kind of really smooth animation and we're not getting like an impact when it touches the ground so for us to get that we need to play with the curve and make this particular area where it snaps the ground a bit sharper okay so one way to do that uh, we can just scale this up we can just scale this in by hitting s okay so you can see just by doing that we have a better looking animation okay so this you can see this is the power of the curve instead of adding bunch of keyframes that we don't need um you can do this also you can just keep playing with this um let's see if we could add some question stretch um okay so we scale this shift z uh, and scale on the z axis inside keyframe and now we have this okay and we can repeat it here so i'm just playing around um it doesn't have any um just get on the z axis just to create a more cartoon, cartoon feel um, so you can see the power of the curve and so you should spend when you are trying to good, get good animation you should spend more time with the curve though blender has some more interpolation mode which you could play with um, cubic um, it could give you some diff a different effect you could play with bounds okay so these are good for motion graphics but when you're trying to do basic animation these are what you should stick with okay so um that's that for um character um basic object animation um now we can move into something more advanced okay so here we have our amateur okay so first of all for you to be able to go into pose mode um you, the way you do that you select the bone and go to this menu here and switch it to pose mode so you can be able to animate an amateur okay so once you have that um you're all good to go also for you to reset any motion of your rig like if i'm to set this just in a very random way and then i want to get the pre the, in the initial tipos all i can all i need to do is hit alt r alt g and alt s to clear the rotation clear this um, location and clear the scale Okay, so that's that and now um, same basic principle you can pose it select or insert keyframe pose it insert keyframe so why you can, okay let's use this as a learning practice I made a mistake because in the key setting I only set rotation which it's quite wrong for this instant I need the rotation and scale so I'm going to set it appropriately and let's repeat that once more so we hit inside keyframe and here we can repeat what we did so as you can see it's working now 
yeah so that's it guys i hope this tutorial was a good was helpful if you enjoyed it please give me a thumbs up and if you wish to see more for me don't forget to hit the subscribe button thank you for now see you next time